Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing ligand-gated ion channels. Okay, so we've discussed that there are three different families of ligand-gated ion channels. P2X-like receptors, um, then we've got uh, the glutamate receptor-like family, we've got the, and then finally we've got the uh, cis-loop ligand-gate ligand-gated ion channels, which are also known as the pentameric ligand-gated ion channels, and also are known as the nicotine receptor-like family of ion channels. Okay, right, so we've discussed two examples of cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, uh, namely the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and also the 5-HT3 receptors. Now what we want to do is discuss two final examples, examples which are the GABA-A receptor and also glycine receptors. So, let's begin with GABA. So, GABA, the neurotransmitter GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter and it's the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. Now, its name stands for gamma, that's the first G, gamma, and then we've got amino, butyric acid. And that is a very, actually a very simple molecule. So, it is an amino acid, and I'll show you why, but it's not a normal amino acid. It's not one that you would use in proteins. So, it's butyric acid. Now, butyric acid is the old name for butanoic acid. So, butyric acid is the old name for butanoic acid. Let me just move this up a bit. Butyric acid is equal to what would now be known as butanoic acid. Okay, right. So, um, it's a four-carbon carboxylic acid. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, put hydrogens on all of these, but then we need to think, because it's not just butyric acid. We've put a gamma amino. So, we're going to stick an amino group somewhere. Now, all we need to know is what's, which carbon is the gamma carbon. Well, this carbon here is referred to as the alpha carbon. The first carbon off the carboxylic acid carbon is the alpha carbon. Then this is the beta carbon. And then finally, this is the gamma carbon. Okay, so now what we know is this gamma group has, to, sorry, this amino group has to come off this final carbon. So we'll add hydrogens on like this. And the net labeling of the carbons has messed this up. Okay, and then finally, off this carbon here, this gamma carbon, you stick an amino group like so. So this is gamma, off the gamma carbon, amino, here's our amino group, butyric acid, GABA. Okay, now this is the main uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. So if a neuron releases GABA onto the postsynaptic neuron, then it's not going to cause uh, a depolarization of the membrane of uh, that postsynaptic neuron. Instead, it's going to cause hyperpolarization of the electrical potential difference across that postsynaptic membrane. So, let me show this. If we have our receptor for GABA, which is a ligand, um, sorry, is a uh, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel, so it's in this nicotine receptor-like family, or the pentameric ligand-gated ion channel family, so it's made up of five subunits which all have this cis loop structure. So here are these five subunits. Basically, these type of receptors for GABA are known as the GABA-A receptor. And I should stress this, there are other receptors for GABA. So there are two major families of receptors for GABA. There are the GABA-A receptors and there are also the GABA-B receptors. GABA-A receptors are cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. GABA-B receptors are GPCRs. So we don't care about GABA-B receptors. They're rarer than GABA-A receptors anyway. Okay, so... Gamma amino butyric acid, GABA, is going to come along, it's going to bind to the GABA A receptor, and somehow, when this GABA A receptor opens, that's going to cause hyperpolarization of the cell. And the way this works is that it is permeable to chloride anions. So it is this time permeable to anions rather than cations. Okay, so. Chloride concentration is higher in the extracellular fluid 
than it is in the intracellular fluid. So, when you open this GABA-A receptor, what's going to happen is that chloride is going to start moving into the cell, basically. And when you move negative charge into the cell, that's going to make the intracellular electrical potential even lower. And because you're moving negative charge out of the um, extracellular compartment, you're going to increase the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment because you're taking away the negative charge. Okay, So the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment, which I'll write as electrical potential of the extracellular compartment, is going up. The electrical potential of the intracellular compartment, which I'll write electrical potential intracellular, is going down. Okay. Now, when we talk about the electrical potential difference across the membrane, we mean the electrical potential difference from extracellular to intracellular, which means how much does it change, does this value of electrical potential change if you move from extracellular to intracellular? If you had a little man sitting outside the cell measuring electrical potential there, and he moved intracellularly, how much would the number he had on his screen change by? So really it means the electrical potential intracellularly, the new electrical potential, minus the old one, which was the electrical potential extracellularly. Now this is usually kept around negative 65 or negative 70 millivolts, which means that the electrical potential if the intracellular compartment is roughly 65 millivolts lower than the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment. But if you raise this, uh, sorry, if you raise the electrical potential extracellularly and lower the electrical potential intracellularly, then the amount by which this one is lower than this one is going to get even bigger, i.e. this number is going to get even more negative. Okay, so it will cause a hyperpolarization, moving chloride anions into the cell. Okay, right. And this is how GABA-A receptors inhibit the um, postsynaptic neuron. And this is known as an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, an IPSP. Okay, and it makes the postsynaptic neuron less likely to fire an action potential. In addition, this movement of charge in the form of chloride anions. This is a current. A current just means a movement of charge. So this is a movement of charge. So this current is known as an inhibitory postsynaptic current. Okay. So GABA binds to the GABA-A receptor, triggers this inhibitory postsynaptic current, which then leads to the production of an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, this reduction in the electrical potential difference across the membrane. Okay. Right. Similarly, there are also glycine receptors, which are again uh, members of the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel family. Okay, uh, So they are pentameric, and each subunit has um, a cis-loop structure. Now basically, just as GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, glycine, which is another amino acid, so let me show you the structure of glycine here. Glycine is a proteinergic amino acid. And I remember I forgot to tell you why GABA is an amino acid. Basically, it's an amino acid because it's got an amino group and an acid group, very simply. Even though it doesn't just have one carbon in between the two, which a normal proteinergic amino acid would, it doesn't mean that it's not an amino acid anymore. Okay, but glycine is a proteinergic amino acid. So it has one carbon between the two, and it's the simplest of the proteinergic amino acids because its R group is just a single hydrogen. So you can see how almost glycine is just a smaller version of GABA. And glycine is the inhibitory neurotransmitter that's used in the spinal cord. So um, GABA in the brain, glycine in the spinal cord. Glycine, too, has special receptors for its, itself, for, uh, which are uh, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. And when glycine binds to these neuron, uh, to these um, receptors, it will cause the channel to open. And again, glycine receptors are permeable to chloride. So it means that glycine is going to cause an inhibitory postsynaptic current into the cell, which will cause hyperpolarization of the postsynaptic membrane, i.e. an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, and make the postsynaptic neuron less likely to fire. 
So we've now seen four examples of cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. We've seen the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, the 5-HT3 receptors, the GABA-A receptors, and the glycine receptors. And those are the four main uh, types of um, cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels.